Sánchez.
Good morning, everyone. Can I just ask the guys at the back, can we just please have our seats? We're about to start shortly. I know there's a few people still outside. If we can just have our seats. Morning, morning, sir. the good ones first and man I've tried to be strong and carry on but damn this hurts and I just wish that I could talk to you again somehow some way even if it's for a moment so I can hear you say don't cry for me, I'm alright I'm better than you know And this life can be a shorter ride So don't waste it on sorrow And just hold on to those moments And the memories we share we're both headed for the same place anyway I just beat you there Just beat you there.
Cool. Nice, Baba. Jump. Come weary and tired, worn out from life, and step out of the shadows and walk into light. Come sinner, sing, slay men all free, and bring blessings and offerings, then you shall see. Bring blessings and offerings, then you shall see. Good morning, family. Um, on behalf of Pastor Bosov and the CRC Johannesburg family at the church, we just want to welcome everybody and just convey our serious condolences to the family, to Taryn, to the daughters, Riley, Ella, Arnoline, Uncle Mark, to Carrie, Jock, Craig, friends, everybody there. Just our heartfelt condolences on behalf of the church. Um, I'll share a bit of the story of how I got to know Graham later, um, but I'm going to ask that we all just stand this morning as we come before the Lord in worship uh, before we start the service. Thank you very much.
bow our heads. Father, Lord God, we honor you this morning. We give you praise. We give you glory. Lord God, as that song says that you are the way maker, the miracle worker this morning. Father, Lord God, we honor you. Lord God, your word says that you are close to the brokenhearted, Father, Lord God, and we know that we can feel the pain even in this place, but you know, Father, Lord God, you said that you've sent the helper, the comforter in the Holy Spirit, Lord God, and that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. This morning, Lord God, we do not mourn like those without hope, Lord God. You are our refuge. You are our strength this morning, Father, Lord God. So we choose, Lord God, like Job, Lord God, he said that even though you smite him, yet will I trust you, Father, Lord God. I will lift up my head, my eyes to the hills where my help comes from this morning. We honor you, Father, Lord God. We remain and we steadfast, Lord God, to say that you are good God this morning. Even though we don't understand, Lord God, even though your word says certain things remain a mystery unto you, Father, Lord God. But we keep our eyes fixed, Father, Lord God, on you. Lord God, you say you are the way, the truth, and the light. We thank you, Father, Lord God. You are our truth. You are our way maker this morning. You are our rock. Father, Lord God, you are our refuge. Lord God, I pray let us feel you closer than ever before. Everyone in this place, every brother, sister, Lord God, every colleague, Lord God, we bring them before you. Lord God, we ask you for help in a time of need, Father, Lord God, where we grieve. You say, Father, Lord God, you will never leave us where you found us. So we honor you this morning. We thank you for your presence in this place, Lord God. Heal broken hearts. Take away the pain, the suffering, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We lift you up, King Jesus. Be honored in our midst. Come and take your rightful place. We submit this time unto you, Father, as we celebrate the life of Graham this morning. A soldier for you, Father, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. And all God's people say, amen. amen. You may be seated, family. I think uh, for most that's been here, if you need the bathroom, just up with the steps into the left. That's basically the only house rule. Um, I don't know about flashing photography and everything else. I know we're being streamed. Welcome to everyone online. Thank you so much. I think when Kerry and I spoke, I think Kerry was like, uh, faster like 100, maybe 150. I think we had over 200 plus seats in this place, but it shows. It shows the impact that Graham had. It shows who he was as a person. Family, we're gonna start off with some speeches this morning from the family and friends. Um, first, I'd like to call up Craig, Craig Taylor, to please come say a few words. Good morning, everybody. Somber occasion, a time like this, is always a time of thought, a time of thinking, time of pondering, where am I going in my life and what am I doing? And um, when we miss somebody so dear, it's very hard. Um, my wife and I have known the Stretton family for many years. In fact, before Graham and Carrie were born. So we've grown up with both Graham and Carrie. Well, they've grown up with us. <laughs> um, <clears throat> from Joburg days to George days, we didn't move down to George, they did. And, um, and I'm pretty sure every single one of us that are standing or sitting here today have a story about Graham in their lives. Um, the way you met him, what he has said to you, and how he's either impacted in your life or the th road that he has taken you down, let alone the road that you have taken him down. And I think... Today, we've got to remember that and say, what part did I play in Graham's life as much as what part did he play in my life? Um, we can think of 
all the bad things that Graham did, and I'm sure I can mention some that you will never know and that you don't know, but we won't go down that route. Um, for me, my wife and I, we were talking, we, we were saying that we remember Graham for who he was in terms of he loved people. He, no matter who it was, no matter what had happened, Graham would always see the best in people and always want to get the best out of people. He came and worked for me for a while, and everybody that was in my office and in my company, he impacted. He then started with Samsung, and I'm sure they could tell you lots of stories there as well. But Graham was impactful in his way. Yes, he got up to mischief. Yes, he got up to stuff. But he was impactful in his way. One of the biggest things for us, I think, was, well, for me, at first was seeing all the tattoos. But then I got to uh, accept all of those, and he managed to persuade me to get my own as well, so... <laughs> that was part of an impact he had on me. But I can just think of happy times with Graham. I think much to his father's disgust, I was the one who got Graham into motorbiking and uh, gave his father many gray hairs because of the racing and the way he rode. Because Graham could never do thing at half pace. It was either full out or not at all. So he never did something, started it, and then did it half. So like when he got on the bike, I think even before, before he had a license, he was full tap, and away he went. And um, made, I think, lots of friends through the biking. May, uh, his racing, I eventually managed to persuade him to go do the racing because I said that would help get out all this energy that he wanted to do on the roads around about town and that, but... It didn't seem to help too much, but uh, it did. he did enjoy the racing. He loved the racing, um, but gave us lots of gray hairs. His uh, mom and dad and even Michelle and myself, um, but yeah, had lots of time with Graham, spoke a lot with him, helped him through ups and downs. But today is about remembering what Graham, the impact that he had on your life. And I'd like you to just think about that. Think about how did he touch your life and how did he impact your life? Because he's impacted every single one of us, even his mom and dad. He's impacted us all. He, Graham sent me something that I would like to read out. And it's something that um, I think is very important for all of us. And it wasn't too long ago, because we all know that Graham had a bit of storms in his life, and we all have storms in our lives. And he sent me this. He says, there is no storm that God won't carry you through. No bridge that God won't help you cross. No battle that God won't help you win. Trust, trust God and never give up. And he sent me that, and I'd like to, I feel he wants to say that to you this morning. And I've got a t-shirt at home that also says, look for the, the peace in the chaos. And I'd like to encourage you today as well. Look for the peace in the chaos in your life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Craig, for those beautiful words. Next up, can we please have Susan Stratton to please come and say a couple of words. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Graham's aunt, Susan, married to Mark's brother, Bruce. I would like to read for you some lines from the poem Invictus by William Ernest Henley, 
I think they best sum up for me the way Graham lived and died. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my ship. Graham Sean Stretton, also known as Gray, the little professor, Thug, G. Loach, had many names and many roles. He was a son, a brother, a grandson, a nephew, a son-in-law and friend to many. However, his ultimate role was that of family man, a husband to Taryn and father to Riley and Ella. They should never doubt how much he loved them. Gray wasn't perfect. He had the same flaws that we all have to some degree or other, but there are some things we can learn from him. The first, I think following on from Craig, is passion. Greg, uh, Graham never dabbled in anything. He displayed this from an early age when he was into TMNT. For those looking shocked now, this means Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> there was not a fact about the lives of Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael and Michelangelo that he could not tell you by the age of four. Gray embraced everything he did. Surfing, boxing, motorcycle racing, kickboxing, tattoos. Whatever he did, he went above and beyond. Maybe he knew time was of the essence. The second thing we can all learn from Gray is love of family. Gray worshipped his wife and children. He also had ultimate respect and love for his parents, sister, and extended family. Gray always greeted me with a hug and a kiss. He kept contact with his technologically challenged uncle, Bruce, by sending him SMSs when everyone else had long ago moved to a different platform. He loved his sister, Karen, and wanted only the best for her. Carrie, Gray would have done anything for you. Mark and Nolene, you raised a good man. Gray has moved to another realm now, but I think we can all take some comfort from the following verse. John 14, chapter 14, verse 2. In my father's house there are many rooms, if it were not so, I would have told you. I would not have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and welcome you into my presence so that you may also be where I am. Please rest assured that Gray is preparing rooms for all of you. These may not be prepared exactly how you may have wanted them, but he is sorting things out to his standards and specifications, and I am sure we will all be very happy. Finally, for those of you that think heaven is a calm, relaxing place with the people play, lying on clouds, playing harps, without so much as a ruffled angel feather, think again. Graham Stretton is in the house. What beautiful words. Definitely, I think there's a party up in heaven with Gray there. I think Angel Gabriel might have a few tatties by now. Um, a whole sleeve, maybe. Um, next up, we can we please call Andrew Simpson to share a couple of words.
Good morning. Looking around the room, I can see many faces I know and many I don't. I'm Andrew Simpson, and Graham and I shared some magical moments during our friendship, which started in our first year of high school. I know Gray is currently listening to this with his hair perfectly GHD'd, smiling from ear to ear. We know our time on earth is limited, and there's a phrase that has always stuck with me. Live each day like it's your last, because someday you'll be right. Gray did exactly that. Growing up in a house with two older brothers, who are also my best friends, made for a very exciting time for any friend of mine. My parents were recently divorced, and we were basically left to our own devices. Graham was immediately welcomed into our family with open arms, and he formed a formidable mixture in our home. And every weekend with us, usually landing up in a world of trouble. But feeling invincible, we knew we had our older brothers who would always pick up the pieces and bail us out of trouble. After high school, both Graham and I wanted financial independence and immediately started working. Graham joining Samsung, who moved him around, with his first port of call being Cape Town. He lived with two upstanding members named Chris Marie and Justin Grimbling. It would not be fair of me not to mention the bond that these three shared. For many years, you would be hard-pressed to see either one of them out individually, from traveling overseas together to endless memorable weekends. I know this time will forever be close to Chris and Justin's heart. I recall Graham getting a tattoo on his forearm which said brotherhood, all based on the love that these three shared. Chris, Justin, I want to tell you on behalf of Graham that he loved you with all his heart. And regardless of the gap in time, he'll always be looking over you. I think Graham's personality and style always was destined to land up in Johannesburg which he referred to as the reef, but. <laughs> I remember leaving Cape Town to relocate to Johannesburg, and we both shed a few tears that we might never live in the same city. It was not six months later, and Graham had managed to relocate to Johannesburg. I remember, like yesterday, him arriving at my one-bedroom flat in his BMW 325i with cream leather interior. He walked up the stairs whistling in true G. Loach style, and I knew this man was destined for greatness. Graham truly embodied the term larger than life. We ended up sharing my apartment for a few months, and during this time, we had the most amount of fun. I can truly say we had no bad days, young, wild, and free. I was lucky enough to have my brother William move up to Johannesburg, and the three of us moved into an apartment together. Again, this will go down in my life as some of the best times. We all shared a love for gym, boxing, brying, and ultimately having a good time. Graham was the best flatmate, always cleaning, always shopping, and rest assured he had the best hair products in the house. <laughs> Although I no longer need that. <laughs> Graham had a very unique way of always making me feel good about myself. He would tell people I was the strongest, fittest, hardest-hitting individual he had ever met, and he reassured me daily that I was the best version of myself. A lot of my self-respect and love for myself today stems from the years and care given from Graham. I know I'm not the only one in the room that feels this way. Graham had a heart of pure gold, and if you are lucky enough to be part of that heart, you knew you could always count on him. I think during Graham's time in Johannesburg, he really refined his skill in sales and people management. I can confidently say, as I'm the same, that what Graham lacked in traditional academics, he matched and surpassed in, the character, in character and life skills. This was a man who could get anyone on his side, and would not, you would not leave a room after meeting Graham without being totally consumed. Sorry, but consumed by his infectious personality. Wherever I traveled, wherever I went, people would ask me, where's your friend Graham, with genuine interest? If you followed Graham on Instagram or Facebook, you were assured to be entertained. Since receiving the news in late December, I've battled to come to terms with this loss. Mm -hmm. 
together with the heartbreaking pain, I'm lucky enough to still be able to laugh as I remember certain key moments, unique experiences or phrases of his. Although Graham's physical body is not with us anymore, I know his legacy will live on in his family and my heart forever. Uncle Mark, Hot Mark, Auntie Knowles, Hot Knowles, Carrie, Baba Bunter, I want you to know that Graham loved you more than you'll ever know. I've had some time to digest over the last few weeks, and I can tell you, during my friendship with Graham, he never had a negative word to say about you. He lived to impress you and spoke about you all with so much pride. We have shared some beautiful times together as a family, and I'll forever be grateful for that. Taryn, I had the privilege of knowing Graham during all stages of his life, from scholar, working class, friend to brother, but never had he had the fulfillment that he had as a husband and father. I remember during his early days of dating you, he would show me photos of you and say, can you believe this is my girlfriend? His exact words, full perfection, my blood. Full, te <laughs> full 10 out of 10, sir. <laughs> Taryn, I have not been around during your marriage with Graham, but I still had lunches, coffees, and we would visit. His comments remained the same. You were the love of his life, the one who got him up in the morning, and the one he worked so hard for. Riley and Ella, I don't think your father could have possibly loved you anymore or been any prouder. You were his life's greatest achievement. Your two angels are of similar age to my girls, and my responsibility is to make sure that you'll forever know how special your father was. Nothing made your dad happier than the moments he had with you. His legacy will live on through you both. Graham used to say, moderation is for cowards. There was nothing Gray did half-heartedly, everything full speed ahead. I'm honored that at some point in Gray's life, I had the title as best friend. And this is a title I'll hold to my heart forever. Tragedy has a way of bringing, tragedy has a very special way of bringing people together. I need to find the tools to deal with this. And I hope and pray each one of you can find some comfort in the special moments with Graham. Brother, we were often misunderstood, but I understood you. I love you. I miss you. And I'll never forget you till we meet again. Thank you very much, Andrew, for those beautiful words. Uh, next, we'll ask Carrie, her sister, to please come and say a few words. I don't know why I chose to speak last. I'm a mess already. Thank you for being here today. Um, each and every one of you were a special part of Gray's life, and... I know that today was a little bit uncomfortable for some of you, but that's exactly what Graham would have wanted. He wasn't ashamed of his faith. He, the louder the music, the longer the worship, the better. And um, I've really had that on my heart over the last few weeks as I've just tried to process everything. Thank you to everyone who's been there for Taryn, for my parents. Thank you for allowing us to host here. CRC has just been amazing to Jacques for putting up with me just bursting into tears when I'd see a pineapple and he'd say, and now, and I'd say, Gray and I used to eat pineapple. It just, it's, been, it's been a wild ride. The, ma the main thing that I'd like to share with you today, and I think it's just so beautiful that everyone who spoke had a similar feeling and a similar theme around Gray's life, and that was his love for people. He took interest in each and every person. The amount of tellers that I've had phone calls from, whether it's Diskim, checkers, and they just say to me, you won't know who I am, but your brother, he was my best. He made my day. He took interest in each change. He even knew when I'd highlighted my hair. And he'd just take the time to get to know me. And I just felt like I was the only person in the world when I was speaking to your brother. 
we all have this thing from Gray about go big or go home. Live large. I'm not discrediting that. I know that my brother did everything in an all or nothing style. But the one thing that I've, it has been so clear to me since he's gone, and I know that he's putting this on my heart, is go big, but guys, please go home. Home doesn't have to mean a dwelling. It doesn't have to be a physical building. For some of you, it might be. Don't have the one last drink at social. Go home. Go and deal with what's facing you there. For others, it may mean a relationship that you keep saying you're going to rekindle. You keep saying, one day I'll forgive that person, and you haven't done it yet. For my brother, please go and do that. There's so many things that I, even as his sister who spoke to him seven times a day, I just wish that I'd said to him, and now we, I don't have that chance physically. Go and do it now. It always made me laugh how huge Graham was in terms of his spending, as we've heard, his tattoos. And I know that he loved those things. He loved to be flashy. You would hear him coming before you would see him, whether it was his motorbike or his M5 and the worship arriving at Samsung office. But Gray's true, true, true happiness was that woman right there. And his girls. Gray would be happy sitting at home eating a chicken snitchel with the aircon on, <laughs> cleaning the counters twice over, and just watching his girls. As I speak about family, I do want to just stay on Taryn, my beautiful sister. Same as Andrew, I remember the day <laughs> when he had told me about you, and he said to me, my sis, she is perfect. I mean, look at this. He showed me on his cell phone. He said, have you ever seen anything like this? <laughs> he said, she loves her career. She doesn't want to just stay at home. She loves animals. She loves children. She is perfect. Baba, can you imagine never having a hangover in all your life? Taryn has never had a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> she is so pure, my sis. He did then proceed to say how Taryn takes two hours, 20 minutes to get ready, but he said that he'd gladly put up with that for the rest of his life. As your marriage evolved and you guys became parents, Taz, he kept echoing how amazing you are. And the last time he took me to the airport, he said that he has no idea how you deal with his OCD, his diffusers spraying fragrances everywhere, and his particularness around the cleanliness of the house. But he said she loves me anyway. If you are today, each and every one of you, I would like for you to honor this family. Not while it's raw and real now. Please stay in touch with Taryn. Reach out to her. Physically be there for her girls. Not just one or two messages now and this time, but over the rest of her life and the girls. I found a post that Gray made on Facebook, and it says, I pray we are raising our daughters in such a way that they won't give the world power to change them, and that when it tries to shape them into something else, they will boldly reject its efforts and revel in the mold made exclusively for them. The shape that they wear best is themselves, guarded by God's grace. Let's help Taryn raise her beautiful girls, and although daddy isn't here, he left an army behind to be with them. <sighs> Samsung, oh Samsung, <laughs> for 18 years I've had to hear how no other brand can make a nanotechnology washing machine. <laughs> My sis, we are the only ones who got to fold a phone. <laughs> God bless any guy who tried to date me and walked in with an iPhone. They were already scared of Gray and his tattoos, and then they would just, like, shamingly put their phone in their pocket. But seriously, guys, you were like family to Gray. Jade, you were like a brother to him. He would say to me, my boss, 
he's like a real boss. He's run 20 kilometers before any of us are up in the morning. He then proceeds to get his boys ready for work, checks on me over WhatsApp, sends us a stat report, and he's not even at the office yet. I was so, so glad to attend a few of your India functions and some of the Samsung events. And Gray took interest in each and every one of you. He would introduce me to people and say, oh, that's Nosipe, we worship in the basement together. Oh, that's Gigi, she's brilliant at training. That's for Russia. I need to check on her and she just lost a family member. Oh, that's Brendan, his wife just had their second baby. I don't know how he remembered it, but he did. And he'll have a story about each and every one of you. I have no doubt that with the launch of the S24, he's gonna pull some strings from upstairs. <laughs> Suddenly the Durban port is not allowing in Apple containers and Huawei. <laughs> it's coming, I'll, I'll, I promise you. To Gray's biking community, <laughs> thank you for coaching him on how to explain to Taryn that as the sun hits the tarmac, the, the racing track suddenly changes and the curvature just becomes a little bit more. So it wa was not his fault at all that he crashed. It was merely that the track does change throughout the day. Hence him being in a cast and a splint uh, with his baby being six weeks old. To Rudy for explaining to me that it's all part of the sport. Your brother is nine meters down a mine shaft, but don't worry, it's all about the sport. Not that Graham the idiot just wanted to ramp the highest ramp on the farm that was undiscovered. But seriously, guys, thank you for giving him a community that most of us won't experience and a freedom of the bike that we'll never know. Lastly, and only because I know that I will never hold it together, I want to acknowledge these two people sitting in front. Mom and Dad. You gave Gray an upbringing like no other. We used to joke that he was swapped at birth because there's no ways that they could have such a live wire and I was so chilled. <laughs> but the truth is, is that Gray learned the enthusiasm of life and love for people, humor and social and great engagement from Auntie Knowles. He learned integrity, he learned hard work, and he learned to be a family man like you, Daddy. You led Gray to have a heart for Jesus. And he was never, ever ashamed of that. And I have no doubt that people sitting here today will be impacted by that. And that's all because of you. Let's go celebrate my brother's life today. I know it's sad, but I don't, he would not want that. He would have wanted us to have it in the car park with subwoofers and whatnot. But let's go big. But let's go home. Go and find your passion. Go and see what sets your soul on fire. If making ceramic pots or teaching children is what you want to do, make a step towards there. Go and see people that you wish you had and that you keep saying you'll do it later. Let's remember that it's not the duration of your life, it's the donation. And I think that Gray did that so well. I promise that his spirit is here and it will always be here and we will just remember and love him forever. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kerry. Um, family, I won't be long. I think as I share, you'll realize that a month before Graham passed, he basically wrote a sermon for me. Gary sent me messages and literally, almost line by line, he wrote everything down, every scripture, everything that he wanted to say. I'll read a message just now um, of what he posted literally a month before his passing. I just want to start off with the Psalm, Psalm of David, Psalm 23 says, the Lord, the shepherd of his people. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, King David writes this as king, but he understands that even though he's so powerful, even though he loves life to his fullest, we all know the story of King David. One thing that I learned this morning that a lot of people say is that Graham wasn't perfect. God does not use perfect people. You are disqualified immediately. Amen? Because you don't need God's grace if you're perfect. But Graham, this was him. He understood, like a King David, full on, living life full on, but understanding God's on my side. One of the messages that Gray posted, he posted in the family group, and I asked Gary if I can share these things. It says, at first Gideon didn't understand when God told him to go in the strength that you have. Because when you've been dealing with defeat for a long time, it can be hard to feel like you're, you're, you're strong enough, you're not strong enough to stand up to what you're struggling with. But in reality, God's already equip, equipped you with exactly what you need. You're a living instrument in the hands of a living God. So take back your confidence and step forward into victory. I'm sorry, maybe didn't just send that to the family group, but maybe to friends that needed it. You know, I met Graham with Rudy. We had, um, it was with the, with the looting up in Durban and Yan Gauteng and there was one of our guys in church, he owns a trucking company, and the Durban church reached out and said, listen, there's a big need for food and things there, but they were hitting everywhere where they, the people found out where there's food. They were trying to hit that. Um, they hit Deep Sluot, they hit Car Sands, Cosmo City, everywhere. And we literally had trucks and buses and things coming with food here to our premises. And as much as we have Fidelity ADT, um, we asked a couple of guys, can I say soldiers, that's unashamed of God, but like a Peter that had a knife, we asked, can you please come and stand watch? Because we know we've got a community down the road, people are hungry, but people are bleeding up in KZN. So we called a meeting in this very room, and here walks in with Rudy, this tattooed guy, and we just never met the guy, never met him. One of our pastors where he's ex-special forces, and he'll, all he asked, he says, give me one night. We need three. I just want one night from you. Come, kiss your family. They're burning stuff all over. And we literally had a military operation. But Gray showed up that night, people. Full camo. <laughs> he was ready. He was ready. Full camo. I still send Kerry the picture in the week. I sent Rudy the picture as well. Full camo. Head to toe. That man was ready for war. <laughs> he, I, I was up and down. I was getting food for everybody. We were on talkies. We had guys on the roof. We had guys at lookout points. Proper military operation. The next day, I found out the guy asked me on, that was on the camera. He's like, listen, who was that guy that was patrolling like a Sami Argent <laughs> on, the, on the fences around and I'm like, what are you talking about? He says, no, there was a guy. Did you give a, sol a proper soldier here? <laughs> there was a guy that literally, I mean, you all drove in. That long fence on the side there. Ray would walk on the hour. He would start there, walk, literally like a soldier with his gun in the air, just marching. And there was nobody here. It was boxes of food. <laughs> That's all they were protecting. It was food. But they understood that just that, because we could pack the boxes the next day, in three days we could leave during the night, take the stuff to Durban, and we could feed people. But that's who he was. That's the type of character as well. We, we opened the church in, in, in COVID. Um, the cops tried to intimidate us a couple of times. We said, okay, we show force with force. And we walked in, and in our basement, as you walked in, here's Gray, 
with a mask on, with a cap, with this big gun standing there. Now people are like, but it's a church. But, we're like, but that's who he was. That's the way he served. That's who he was as a person. Um, he had the biggest heart for God. He had the biggest heart for, for the church. He said, I, don't know, I remember phoning him one time and he said, you know, I'm just busy with this. Um, I'll ask my wife and then I'll come through. And if you couldn't make it, you always, you always say. You always tell Rudy, tell. But he, was, he wanted to just do anything he could for God and for people. You know, and I, as I was just preparing and just thinking of what to say, what would Gray say? What would he say on behalf of, of everybody? Uh, and I think more than anything, you know the society that we live in, there's a saying that says, if good men say and do nothing, evil will prevail. And we live in a society now that many people just look away. They will not take action. They won't man up. They won't face a school board for teaching rubbish. We just accept. And that's not the type of man that Graham was. We heard he lived full, and I know. When he died, he died empty. He died knowing, God, I did what you've called. I mean, we saw the pictures. That is not a half a life. That is not somebody that thought, I still want to do this, do this, do this, do this. He did everything full on. Whether it was his naughtiness and his imperfections, he did it full on. We need men of prayer. We need men of the cloth. We need men in business. But we need men of action. We need men that will lead their families in turmoil times like this. We need men that will stand up. So more than anything than me preaching and me sharing a word, this is a call to brothers. This is a call to the men here in this room. And I challenge you, boldly, stand up. Stand up in society. Stand up where you are, in your workplace, for your family. Stand up. I mean, Gray was literally as David, short, but what he had in him was like very few people that we've seen. He was a man of action. David himself was a warrior, but he was a worshiper of God. You know, we have lost a soldier in God's kingdom. It hurts us. Because very few people you can depend on the way you can depend on a Graham. He was a no-nonsense person when it came to certain things, but he still had a heart softened for God. Like I said earlier, God is not looking for a perfect man, but an honest man that is willing to say, God, here I am. Use me. You know, in John 21, Jesus speaks to Peter. And he says, Peter, do you love me? He says, God, you know I love you. He says, then feed my sheep. God asks him again, Peter, do you love me? He says, God, you know I love you. He says, tend my sheep. You ask him a third time, and Peter gets irritated. God, but you know I love you. And God says, feed my sheep. What does it mean to you this morning? What are you leaving undone? Like Kerry said, that conversation that you're not having, that person that you're not saying, I forgive you, that uncle, aunt, wife, Whoever it is, what are we leaving undone? We saw this morning, Gray, full on, no half measure. You know, scripture teaches us we're either hot or cold. Jesus says, if you are lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. It's either all or nothing. John 10 teaches us the good shepherd lays his life for the sheep. We have a good shepherd this morning. And Gray embodied that. He was willing to lay his life down for his family, 
for his friends. That's who he was. So I ask you, especially the men in this place, love God, love your family, love your wife, love your children, but more than anything, that love demands action. Jock, I can't tell you I love you and not do anything. Carrie, I can't tell you I love you and not do anything. Love demands action. Jesus, when he said it is finished, he showed us by action. Listen to this message by Graham that he sent in one month before his passing. And that's why I say, I don't have, I don't need to say much. This sums it up. Gray said this, he says, the Bible explains that the first time God destroyed the earth by water, and he promised to never do that again. He, won, he went on to say that he will destroy it by fire the second time. He says, I won't even pretend to understand all of the book of Revelation, but I do understand quite plainly that I do not wish to spend eternity. I do not, uh, sorry, but I do not understand quite plainly. I know that I want to spend eternity in heaven. I've been hearing about the second coming of Christ and the events unfolding since I was a child. The mark of the beast, artificial intelligence, microchips, no cash, digital currencies, total government dependency control, an unusual increase in natural disasters. When we are busy raising a family, working long hours, some of you two jobs, lots of things go unnoticed or just get ignored. No one can comprehend how bad it will be, but we can see it happening, but by but on the news every day. While the devil is preparing people for the Antichrist, God is preparing people for the rapture. I'm not planning to be left behind. When that trumpet sounds, I also believe, I also believe right now that God is giving us a chance to repent, to make right. Until the good Lord calls me away from this world to go home, I want to make it clear that I believe in Jesus Christ as the one and only true Lord and Savior. Despite the fact that I'm human and I fail a lot, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for my sins, and that in placing my heart and faith in him, my name is written in the book of life. I'm a believer in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Graham posted this scripture in his family group, Proverbs 16, 9, it says, we make our plans, but the Lord decides where we will go. I mean, I've done many funerals. I've never had a message like that. This is a month before his passing, but it's somebody, he was at peace. He had a knowing. He knew, as much as I've done this, as much as I've not lived maybe a perfect life, but I know the day that I breathe out my last, this is where my faith is. Can we just have every head bowed quickly in this place before we pray? Father, Lord God, we honor you. We thank you for this time. Family, very shortly, very brief, very direct this morning, but I feel that's what Graham was not beat around the bush. I'm going to ask this morning, what about you? Before we close, just with every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, where are you this morning? Do you have that confidence that Graham had? The assurance that he had? You know, the Bible says, we're not promised tomorrow, but we can know. We have a witness on the inside of us that says, God, if I breathe out my last, I know. We heard the family say, God, Graham has gone and prepared a place for us. I want to ask you, though from the biking community, 
Heard from Samsung, everybody. How about you this morning? I want to give everybody the opportunity. If you're not sure that you should die, that you'll go to heaven. Ma, please pray with you. God's not mad with you. God's madly in love with you, and he showed that on the cross. I'm not asking you to join a church. I'm merely asking you, where do you stand this morning? When you breathe out that last breath, do you have that assurance? You might have given your life before, but you're not sure. I ask you, I beg you, I plead with you. If you're not sure, please make right. Please make right this morning. Before I pray, can I just ask, would you just lift up your hand and say, oh, please pray with me. I'm not sure I want to pray. I want to give my life. I want to be assured this morning, like Graham was, with that boldness, understanding. Anybody in this place? Father of God, we thank you. Make sure, young man, young woman, we have no promise of tomorrow. It will be my greatest honor. I know this is what Graham would have wanted. Make sure this morning, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father of God, we honor you. We give you praise. We thank you for every soul in this place. I pray that you speak to everyone's hearts. Those making right right now, Father Lord God, I thank you that they confess you as Lord and Savior, that they will know that you are real. I thank you, Jesus. Can I just ask that we just keep bowing our heads as we pray, Lord Jesus, we thank you. We honor you for this day that we could give Graham our final respects, Father. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Lord God, you are so good. Even in the midst of trouble, in the midst of a storm, like David said, even though we walk through the valley of shadow of death, we will fear no evil, Father Lord God. I pray, Lord God, this morning, that as Graham was a mighty man, I pray, Father Lord God, a call for mighty man to arise in our nation. I honor you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory this morning. Family, now may the beloved, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you very much, family, on behalf of CRC and the Johannesburg family. Um, it was an honor for us to do this. Carrie, over to you. Sorry, Al. Um, there's, there was going to be another worship song, and um, the slideshow will play in the background, but I just really have it on my heart that I'd like to share a voice note that my mom actually found. Um, Brandon's got it, and he's going to play it for us, and we'll just use that as our, as our ending, because I really feel that as you hear... G. Loach, G. Graham, Gray, little shit, um, that it'll speak to you. And then you're welcome to watch the slideshow again or just mingle outside. We'd love to, to share with you. Brandon, over to you with our voice note. 20th of November, 2019, Graham Stretton, yeah. As you know, you know, every day I, I find verses in the Bible for you guys and girls and then stories from my books and all that just to try and inspire you. So today I found a very uh, nice story, but let me first read my verse um, out the Bible. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it in the full. John 10 verse 10. Rose was 87 years old when she went to university. Let me say it again, 87 years old when she went to university. On the first day, the professor challenged the class to get to know somebody new. Rose tapped a student on the shoulder and said, Hi, handsome. My name's Rose. I'm 87 years old. Can I give you a hug? 
The guy laughed and asked, why are you in college at this age? Rose replied, I've always dreamed of having a college education and now I'm getting one. Rose became a campus icon and made friends wherever she went. In a speech, she told her classmates, we do not stop playing because we are old. We grow old because we stop playing. Rose finished her degree and one week after graduation, she died peacefully in her sleep. 2,000 students attended her funeral to pay tribute to this wonderful woman who showed that it's never too late to be all you can possibly be. Too many people are walking around with deadened hearts and don't even know it. God wants us to live abundantly. Some of us aren't excited about heaven because we haven't figured out how to really live here on earth. Let that sink in. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we don't want to be one of the walking dead, a man or a woman with no vision and no hope. We want to move forward and live our lives abundantly for you. Amen. Amen. Soldiers for Jesus. to me. 